Jeff in Melbourne, Australia writes to me. He says, hey, Paul, is the XLR noise filtering a passive process? I'm in a transitory situation of having a DAC with XLR and RCA outputs, but an amp with only RCA inputs. It seems to me that if XLR noise filtering is passive, it should be possible to plug an adapter on the receiving end of an XLR cable to do the same filtering immediately before the RCA input and largely receive the benefits of a balanced connection. Yeah, you, you can do that. You can do that without active electronics, and you would do that with a transformer. Wouldn't be my first recommendation, but that's how you would do it. So a balanced connection, your XLR connection, has the amazing ability to lower noise, lower distortion, get rid of hum. I mean, <clears throat> to the extent, well, take this studio. This is Octave Records. At Octave Records, we have, I want to say miles of XLR cable, probably not that much, but I mean hundreds upon hundreds of feet of cable running every which way in here and it's as quiet as a mouse. We're like 120 dB down. Why? Because a balanced cable is able to use something called common mode rejection that rejects anything in common on the two wires. So just, just as a, a, a reminder, an XLR cable has two signal cables and a shield, okay, and a ground wire, but two signal cables, um, conductors, and an RCA, got to make sure I put the right finger down, has one uh, signal wire and one um, ground wire and, and shield, okay? So on the XLR cable, we have this balanced push-pull thing where as one signal, it's the same signal, but it's out of phase. One is going up while the other is going down. Now, if we combine those two together, we get zero, nothing, right? Unless we do it in a very specific way. The advantage here is that anything in common is eliminated. Well, these two signals are not in common. They're very uncommon. They're as uncommon as you can get. They're moving in opposite directions. So if you put that into a transformer, into an audio transformer, which relies upon a difference in voltage in order to produce audio and if you don't have that difference you get nothing that will give you common mode rejection so just think about that for a moment let's say that my glasses is the input coil of a of a transformer and which and a coil is just a, a wire coming in and a bunch of winds and going across like that if I want to generate a magnetic field and a, hence a voltage in this transformer, what do I have to do? Well, I've got to put current going across this and this, right? If I put current going in here, this creates a magnetic field. I get a signal, all that good stuff, right? Now, think of it like a battery. If I were to take the plus terminal of a battery and hook it here, and that same plus terminal and hook it here, what would happen? Nothing. It's the same thing. So I put plus nine volts here and plus nine volts here. There's no difference between the two, so no current flows. In order for current to flow, like from the plus to the minus of a battery, you got to have a difference, right? So in the same way, if two things come in that are identical, two signals come in that are identical, nothing happens. So if hum gets into both signal wires at the same time, then that hum, if it's the exact same thing that gets into both wires, is rejected because it doesn't light up the transformer. Does that make sense? And we can do it electronically too, which is what we do here. But the signal, one's going up, one's going down. We have a difference between the two. This generates a magnetic field. We get a signal that ignores everything in common. And that's how a transformer works. Okay? So what you need is an input transformer. And you can buy those online. Again, for the highest end applications, you better get a damn good transformer. Jensen is probably the best out there. A Jensen transformer ain't cheap, 
But if you do it, you'll, you'll be glad you did. Okay. Thanks for the question. Talk to you later. Bye. Thank you.